Hey guys, I uh, thought I'd start out on a little video here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a buckskin. Uh, I've been wanting to do one on camera. Haven't done one in a while, so we're gonna go ahead and do one on uh, camera. And uh, right now I have it stored in the freezer because it's a buckskin from last. It's a it's a deer skin right now from last fall. But uh, first thing I gotta do is get it out of the freezer and thaw it out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I figured I'd include you guys on everything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out, get it thawed, and probably going to take it and fill this blue jug up right here full, or this blue thing. It's a half a 55 gallon drum is what it is, up with water. Well, not full, but I'll probably put five or 10 gallons worth in it. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, put that skin in there. That'll help thaw it out a little bit quicker. And then once it's thawed, then we got to go ahead and uh, do any cleanup on the flesh side if there is any. Um, I'm pretty sure last year when I put it away, a buddy gave it to me and it was already folded up, but he had said that he had cleaned it up pretty good, but we'll see. I don't know how much meat is actually on it. It didn't look like there was much on it. But I'll go ahead and we will uh, do that. And then after we flesh it, I'll probably change the water in this again and put fresh water in there. And I'm going to add just a little bit of lye to the water, like a couple tablespoons. Um, it just makes the hair fall off quicker or easier. Uh, and the lye I'm using is, uh, I'll have to get it out, but it's some kind, of, actually I think I have a bottle right here. It's an empty bottle, but uh, yeah, it's uh, just plain old household drain opener and it's 100% lye is all it is, but you only need a little bit of it. So uh, the other thing you could do is you could use wood ash, but right now I, I actually, I didn't plan on this and I cleaned out the wood burner and the ashes are gone. So I don't have any ash to put in there. So uh, that's the project for now. We're gonna be making a buckskin. We are going to go right through the whole process. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, get this thing filled up. Not gonna do it on camera. And I'll get the hide put in it. And actually, let me pause it. I'll get the hide out and we'll... Okay guys, so here's the hide. in a plastic bag. All folded up. Now when you fold these up to put them in the freezer, you want to fold most of the hairs on the outside. It'll uh, help keep them from getting freezer burnt. Right now it's just a big lump of. Right now it just looks like a big lump of hair. So uh, there it is. We will uh, put it in the pot just like so. And then we'll fill that thing up full of water. And, uh, you know, I'll put 10 gallons of water in there and just let it soak. And I'll probably put 10 gallons of hot water in there, actually, so it thaws it out a little bit better. And I may change it out here and there. I just want to get it thawed out right now. That's the whole deal. So let me go ahead and get some water in there, and I'll show you what it looks like floating around in there. Okay, so we got it. We got the skin in the, uh, in the tub of water. And... I don't know if you can see it. Eh, you know what, here, I'll move the camera a little bit. Oh, I can't see the camera, but it's okay. So it's in the tub of water. It's kind of floating around in there. And we're just gonna let it thaw. And uh, once it starts to thaw, which it already has started thawing, let me back this camera back up. It's already has kind of started to uh, thaw. I noticed I, I could almost get it apart in spots. I don't want to rip it either, so I'm just going to let it kind of soak for a while, let it thaw out. And while we're doing that, I uh, figured I'd talk over a couple of tools you need. It's pretty simple. Um, you need a fleshing beam, which for me, all I do for a fleshing beam is I have a, a 4x4, but it's one of the 4x4s that you would use for like like around your flower beds and stuff where the corners are kind of rounded on it. I have one of those. And a step ladder and all I do is open up the step ladder and I stick the 4x4 through it and kind of lean it so that it's at an angle like this 
And then that, that's kind of what I use for my, my flushing beam. I, I just put the skin over it and, and it seems to work out good for me. I don't do enough skins for me to go ahead and build one. Although I may, I may build one one of these days just for a project. But for right now, that's all I use and it works for me. And the other, other thing that, I, that you need is a flushing tool. And me being cheap, of course, I didn't go out and buy one. I just sort of looked online and sort of made one. And uh, mine's pretty rudimentary, but really all it is is it's a piece of steel. And it's about three quarters or so wide and a little more than an eighth inch thick. You know, and this dimension is not standard. You can do whatever you want. It just so happens that's what I had. And I took a couple pieces of rubber hose slid it over the end so that way I could take both hands and do some pushing with it but really it's uh it's pretty basic you know it's 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 nothing fancy in it and it's it's got a sh it's got a, I won't even say it's it's got an edge on it but it's almost like uh a chisel grind it's a real it's it's not sharp I mean I can take my hands and I can rub my hands up and down on it, it you're not going to get cut and that, and that's kind of what I wanted because when you're scraping that skin, you don't want to accidentally cut through the skin with this. This is just to take off the hair, take off the extra flesh. Um, you're going you're gonna to grain one side of it. You're going to take the membrane off the other side of it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, you'll do most of it with this. I mean, when I do the hair side, I'll take the hair off and I will grain it at the same time. Now on the flesh side, you want to take the flesh off and, and then underneath the flesh there's like this, this membrane. It's real thin and you want to take, get it off too. And then you're done with the fleshing. You know, this tool is done. And then you're off to the next tool. But I figured I would show it to you. And I did go ahead and I went in the house and got a fresh bottle thing of lye. And I might have to look it up because I haven't done this in a while. But I'm pretty sure it only takes a couple tablespoons. And all that does is it, it makes it easier for the hair to come off. Um, you don't have to do that. You can just soak it in water and just leave it soak until the hair does come off easy. That lie, just, it's just a little bit of lie and it speeds it up just a little bit. Um, I'm not quite sure how it works. I think it, it ups the acid in the water a little bit is what it does. And I know that when you're done using the lie, and you got everything off the skin, all the hair, all the flesh, you got membrane, the whole nine yards, um, the next thing you want to do is uh, you want to take that skin and you want to re-soak it, but you want to re-soak it in fresh water. Soak it for a little while, change the water. Soak it for a little while, change the water. Because then you're, you're trying to take the acid back out of the skin. Um, that way the, it, you, the water has a, a basic pH of, uh, it's, a, it's just a good pH balance. So as you dilute it with the regular water once it reaches the pH balance of the water itself you're done and you, you'll tell by the skin because when you put the lye in it on it and you leave it so for a while the skin or skin will almost feel rubbery it'll be like a I don't even know how to explain it it's just like a rubber gelatin type feeling and uh, you know and then when you when you soak it in the fresh water and change the water and soak it and change the water and soak it the skin will go back to feeling like you know like wet skin basically so uh let me go ahead and uh let this thing thaw and we'll get back to you okay so i got the fleshing beam set up and i wanted to show you guys what it looked like i went ahead and just used a regular piece of uh a tree branch and all i did is i tie it into the ladder so that it can't move and it's sitting there nice and sturdy and then i put some weight on it just to keep it a little tighter anyways this is my quick makeshift one i mean you know and I have I set mine up because I like to be able to put my belly up against the beam like this That way when I'm fleshing a hide I can drape the hide over here and I can use my belly as a clamp And then all I gotta do is just push, you know So there that's how it's set up and uh, you know You can use any kind of board You just got to kind of round it off a little bit because you don't want to have sharp edges where you're gonna cut the hide and stuff That's the whole trick um, I've seen flat ones too and stuff like that, but this seems to work for me for the amount of hides that I do. I only do a few. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, take a break for a while until the skin thaws out and then we'll uh, get to de -hairing and stuff. Okay guys, I don't know how the sun's affecting the screen, but okay, this, this hide's thawed out. Um, 
it only took about an hour and it thawed right out uh i got it unfolded in the water here just kind of soaking in here the guy that skinned it left a lot of meat on it i was really surprised um i don't know i don't think i've ever seen a high hide with that much meat on it so it's gonna be a little bit of work so um let me i'll show you what it looks like we'll lift this thing out of here a little bit and you can see all the meat that's on this thing they didn't do a very good job of skinning that that's for sure um let me go ahead and uh point this thing in the right direction i'm not going to touch this camera too much because uh it's kind of hard to tell where i'm at because of the light but i'm not going to touch this camera a whole lot just because of the fact my freaking hands are all mushed up with this stuff but really if first thing we got to do is flesh this thing so we we'll just you just grab this hide and you just hang it over there and you want to kind of hang it so that the weight is sort of centered that way it does some of the work for you and it's totally full of water really all all you want to do is just start start pushing the pushing all this meat off here and this is going to take a little while so let me go ahead and uh i'll get to going on this and i'll show you how it's, how it's going to end up okay guys so I'm keeping a rag with me so i can touch the camera so what we're doing is um and i don't know if you can see this or not but Right here is, it's nice and white. And uh, this is what you want to get down to. And basically you're taking off all the fat and there's a nice, there's a little thin membrane that you're taking off at the very same time. You're peeling it all off. And you're basically just working this whole thing down. I usually try to start somewhere in the middle and I work my way out to the edges, all the way around the whole thing. And once, you, once it starts to peel down, and you get a good spot opened up, it seems to go a little faster. Make no mistake though, this is time consuming. And uh, you'll be here for a little while. But, it's not as bad as you think it is. And, to be honest with you, this is one of the worst skins I've seen as far as people leaving too much meat and stuff on it. So, let me go ahead and work this thing for a while and I'll show you what it looks like after about an hour.